Welcome back, day two, Dallas International Film Festival 2019, here with yeah. Brian Poyser. All right. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. This is not your first. No. Not your first Dallas no, Film I was, Festival. I was trying to total it up. I think, I think my, uh, I think I've had two features and three shorts play here, something like let's that. Let's see. I've had. Let me see. I remember you were one of my first interviews, like the very first year I was here, and that oh, was like. So 2010. Mm, Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovers of Hate. Was, Lovers that, of hate. Two, yeah, was yeah. that 2010? Yeah. That was 2010. Yes, yeah. I yeah. remember. It's a fun year. I, I sent that <laughs> interview to somebody, and she sent me to South by to blog for her oh. as a result of that interview. Well, there you go. Yeah. So thank Worked you. Worked out well for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, let's talk about your new short. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so let, for the for our you, good friends know? at home yeah. um, that can't make it, let's do a little spoiler-free synopsis. Sure. Um, well, it's a <laughs> it's a short film about a uh, a fella who works for this um, made-up um, job matching Task esque website called Go For It, mm -hmm. um, who gets you know sent to this place to help somebody learn how to use spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out that that person is a dominatrix. Oh. And uh, she works, she has a live workspace, uh, a dungeon. <laughs> wow. And uh, so, you know, he tries to kind of like roll with it, um, but then uh, things get complicated. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. You're just going to have to uh, come to, to the Dallas Film Festival and find out. All right. So Midnighters category, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so have you gotten to see the other shorts in your block? I have not seen any of them. I think a couple of them are made by people that I that I know or sort of know, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen any of them yet. So I'm, I'm super excited to see what they are and then how they play, you know, just, just how disturbed and rattled the audience <laughs> is going to be by the end. What reaction are you hoping for? Well, for mine, it is a dark comedy, sure. which is kind of like what I do, I guess, mm -hmm. with most of the films that I make are in that vein. So yeah, so if people don't laugh, then I failed. Um, <laughs> but if they laugh in kind of a... I'm horrified <laughs> or like I don't want people to know that I'm laughing at how awkward this is mm -hmm. then I know that I've done my job so. I've had that every once in a while you the director succeeds in getting me one of those feelings where I'm like yeah yeah one of those reactions yeah yeah so, yeah. yeah so that's, that's the that's what we're going for okay it's it's, a, it's what I like to call fun comfortable fun comfortable yeah look at you yeah. hashtag I wish I could say that it was mine oh, that I came okay. up with that I stole it from somebody, but I don't remember who, so... We can say that it's yours. Yeah, so we can just say that, that it's mine. In that case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, tell me a little bit about your cast, Heather and Justin. Yeah, so so it was really fun to make this film because I, I developed the story, actually, with Brian McGuire, who mm -hmm. um, is... Uh, there's only three people in the movie. Um, uh, he's sort of the surprise guest. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, in the and, dungeon. And he's somebody, yeah, he's somebody that I've known for, like, God, since 1995. Mm -hmm. Like, he was in a student film that I made at UT, so we just struck up a friendship, and he was like one of my groomsmen, and uh, is an actor and director, and uh, he makes music as well. Um, he's lived in LA for a long time, but he just happened to kind of like be in Austin for kind of a stretch, uh, like like it was supposed to be like a couple weeks, but it ended up being like three months. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, let's just make something while you're yeah. here. So like I, you do, yeah. So so I just is, and I had worked with Justin Arnold, who used to live here in Dallas, yeah, um, on a couple other projects, mm -hmm. and I was just like, what if I put the two of them together? And then I knew about a dungeon through my sister. Sorry, Astra, I'm giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so it was like, okay, the two of those guys, Brian and Justin, in a dungeon. What's the story? I don't know. Yeah. We'll come up with something. So, so yeah. So then we just sort of developed the story, and then threw Heather in there in the mix. She's been in a couple of my other films, mm -hmm. and it's a very good friend, and was totally up for doing it. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it all it all came together really fast. Really like, quickly. Yeah. From, the, from an idea to a shot movie in like five weeks, which is okay. you know, pretty fast. Well, for, salute. Yeah. First yeah, of yeah, all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, well, it took me like you know, you know eight months to edit it but oh, you know well, that <laughs> yeah that I, little piece of I filmmaking a, i have a child and i teach and you know it's very busy so what you're saying is you have lots of downtime yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, never yeah. busy so when i make a movie about a dungeon yeah why not yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so being that you'd known all these actors for a while you've yeah. worked with them before and this happened so quickly i mean was some of it improv you know just kind of what not are you guys really bringing along? actually like it's weird it's like as i was 
it wasn't all, it wasn't until recently when I was like doing sort of like the final edit where I was looking over the <coughs> the script and realized realized lines that I thought were improvised were mm -hmm. actually written yeah. you know because they're so good the yeah. actors are so good at just sort of like selling every moment and making it like feel authentic and believable um, so yeah we did get to do a little bit of rehearsal which was really fun That's nice. which is which is really important um, because it was just the three of them and it's like mm -hmm. if their chemistry didn't work then the movie was not going to work yeah. you know because it was just three people in one room essentially um, with lots of other things and implements in it but um, stuff. yeah stuff um, so uh, yeah and, and like they they all three knew each other um, not you know some of them more than others but um, yeah it was just it was it was really great to just have an experience of it felt kind of like a, a little family get together mm -hmm. almost you know it's like each one of them I had made at least two other projects with. Right. Um, and then the, the cinematographer I'd worked with before. Um, uh, some of the, the some of the crew members were like students of mine, <laughs> which was really cool. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was all very, yeah, comfortable mm -hmm. feeling on set. So. All right. As a really established director, you know, for all the young actors out there and yeah. aspiring artists out there, what is it about an actor that keeps you coming back? Like, you yeah. want to cast that person again and again? I mean, I think a big part of it is just, like, is their attitude, you know? Like, mm. if they, if, if, if it's clear, if they, well, a big part of it is, is like, if they ask questions. Like, sure. if they ask questions of, like, you know, what their character is, but also, like, what we're doing. Like, mm. you know, what's, what's happening right now, or where is this going to fit in the story? Or, or they just, like clearly like d are developing rapports with like the makeup people and like the you know the people like setting up the lights and stuff yeah. like if they are just sort of a good like you know member of the team mm -hmm. like member of the family and they like they're engaged in the process it's not just like I'm the actor I come in I do my lines and then I leave and I don't really talk to anybody else mm -hmm. like to me maybe they're good but they're not somebody that I'm going to want to invite back to the party sure. you know mm -hmm. so so talent of course is a big part of it mm -hmm. but that's something that you can't really control necessarily mm -hmm. but just being like a good person and like you know and and being somebody who you know treats it as a collaboration between literally everyone between not just like the actor and the directors but like the grips and the sound people and you know the caterers and stuff then it's like okay you're somebody that I'm gonna want to invite back to be part of this thing you know yeah so yeah well, you mentioned some of your students are yeah. crewing for you or they were crewing for you yeah. on this project like uh, as someone who's done a lot of work in Texas you know you live here I mean you know that the film industry has caught some uh, a little bit of heat yeah the past few years like what is what are some of the really important uh, attitudes and everything that you're trying to impart to your students as they head out into the career field? Uh, I mean, I think I think it's just like being still, like even as things are happening at the state leg state level and with the legislature and the incentive programs and all that kind of stuff, that's like affects like the big stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, that affect that affects like the big. Um, uh, you know, TV shows that come through here, the multi-million dollar features, um, uh, which is really important because it basically makes it so that professionals can, like, live here, like, make mm -hmm. a living here in Texas. Yeah. And you kind of need that. But the great thing is, is that Texas has always been a place where you can make your own small movies yeah. and hone your craft. And there's not the, the, uh, the pressure necessarily for every single one of those to be like a huge success that's gonna like do something for your career the yeah. way it is out in, in LA or something, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I always just sort of encourage them to, to one, like, you know, develop a skill, mm -hmm. like a marketable mm -hmm. skill, like editing or like sound recording or lighting or like being a assistant camera person like yeah. learn some skill where you can fit into yeah something the, ob a, a fairly objective yeah, yeah yeah where you can fit into like a bigger production sure so that when those big projects do come through town you can like get a job yeah you know and cash like, in on that yeah exactly but also at the same time make your own stuff yeah. and like develop you know like 
cherry pick from those crew people, those other professionals that you're working with, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's like, okay, here we are working on this, like, you know, whatever this, you know, uh, uh, Chevy commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, there's a dude who's like a sound recordist on that mm-hmm. who's really great and who I'm friends with, and he's going to come work for a hundred bucks a day on my tiny little indie short, Yeah, you know? And then you get like a real professional mm-hmm. to kind of work on your project because he knows you from you know, working in the real world. Yeah. And so if he's got an off week, mm-hmm. he'll maybe come, you know, do great sound for you. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's just like, you know, try to learn every skill that you possibly can yeah. because that's how you can get a job. That's how you can stay here, um, make a living and then be building those contacts to make your own work yeah. down the road. Yeah, and so. how important is it for uh, young people, like uh, particularly writers yeah. and actors, I'm thinking of, to you know be creating work for themselves rather than waiting on? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's like to me, it's like as long as as long as you're doing as long as you're doing it in a sustainable way, mm. where like you're not trying to make like you know some like a $50,000 short film or something sure. like that, you know, mm-hmm. or even like a $10,000 short film, mm-hmm. you know, it's like make a thousand dollar short film because like you can absorb that. Like you, yeah. you, you can, you know, through like doing Kickstarter or just like raising your own money or like putting on credit cards or something like that. Like you can make like $5,000 short films and learn way more than you yeah. ever would by making one like $10,000 short big film, one. you know? Sure. So it's like, so it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, almost look at, so that smaller work is like sketches, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, not like comedy sketches, but like s- sketches that an artist would do where it's like, it doesn't really take a whole lot of time. It doesn't take a whole lot of resources. You're not going to burn yourself out. You're not going to like burn bridges and like blow favors that you can't ask for on the bigger project down mm-hmm. the road. Um, but you just sort of like develop your craft and learn how to do it, you mm-hmm. know? Like that's like one of the best things about being in film school is that you're literally forced to just produce work. Yeah. You know, it's like you have to produce work to get a grade. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like that's how it is with my students. Like, like the class that I'm just finishing up now, it's like, you know, the students had to do like five projects in the course of like three and a half months, mm. you know, and most of them had never picked up a camera or done right. anything. But they learned so much yeah. by just literally being forced yeah, to do trial it. By fire. But they're all like really small, doable mm-hmm. chunks where they learn something specific each time. And I think sort of taking that approach is, is really, can, can I think be more rewarding in the long run mm-hmm. rather than just be kind of like putting all your attention and all your efforts mm-hmm. on like this one, I'm gonna do my first yeah. feature, I've never done a short before, I'm gonna do my first feature and I'm gonna raise half a million dollars for it. And yeah. then it's just like, well. It's like everything's riding yeah. on this. And, and if it doesn't turn out well, then yes. none of those people are gonna come back and help mm-hmm. you next time. <laughs> Well, maybe not none of them. But, yeah, I mean, but it it's going to be a harder be, ask. Yeah, you and know? A, if it's a bad experience for you, that yeah. I mean, that yeah. can drum a person out of the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just just the the you know emotional turmoil of that of being like, mm. ugh, I put all this effort into it and nothing came from it. So yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, before we go, because I yeah. know there's a lot going on today, but where can people uh, kind of learn more about the short? Like, where are you going next? Oh, um, well, you know, I probably should set up a website or something. Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, I still I still have a page on on uh, Fandor, which is this uh, website um, that still kind of exists <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that uh, that has a bunch of my other films on it. Okay, um, nice. Uh, so this one's not on there yet, but I think once we're kind of like done through the festival circuit, I'll mm-hmm. put it up there and, you know, eventually build some sort of website by myself. But, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Find uh, you on Instagram or something? Uh, you know, Twitter. I'm on Twitter, yeah. I'm on, on the Twitters. One. I'm on that one, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, well, Brian, cool. thank you a oh, lot. Thank you Congratulations so on oh, another thanks. film. Oh, yeah, it's great to be here yeah. again. See yes. you again. Thank